All right, so hello everybody. Uh, we've got our speaker and uh, we're going to get started. So uh, let's go. Sorry, you guys. Um, so today, technically, <laughs> the talk is turning an object into a teaching tool. And this is like last time. It's a prelude to a workshop in Second Life, um, for which I'll probably change computers. But uh -huh. anyway, but before we go there, what we're going to do is we're going to review a little bit of what we did the last time. Um, because we didn't actually get all the way done. As you remember, we, we had a very, um, about four or five of you, I think, came into the playground, the sandbox, at the Second Life um, MOOC headquarters, and we had a really good uh, session building and slapping textures on things and rolling things around and doing quite a lot of wonderful things. Um, but I didn't get all the way through what I wanted to talk about, and I wanted to make sure that the complete um, guy was up there, so uh, the, the complete PowerPoint was available. So I went back and I finished out this PowerPoint, and um, oh dear, everybody, oh gosh. I'm going to let uh, Nelly take care of the chat. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, so I redid a little bit of this, um, kind of changed it around uh, so that uh, it would reflect a bit more what we did the last time. So we were working with the build menu, the general tab, the object tab, tab, and we were changing the dimensions of the prim. And you remember that prim is that little plywood box that you get when you click up the build menu in Second Life, and we were playing with it, size, and all kinds of other things, um, and then naming it a, a, the object and saving it as a template, which is really important. Um, the, last, the last time I gave that, well, when I gave that talk, um, Wilson Voigt was one of the um, class members. He is Russ Bronson in Second Life, and he is the owner of Spanish Speak and Metaverse Spanish, which used to be called the Instituto Español. And Wilson is moving his installations, uh, the majority of his installation, from Second Life to OpenSim, and discovered that he had 5,000 objects named Object. And the problem with an object that's named Object is that you have to pull it to the bar and take a look at it. You have to pull it to the ground and take a look at it to figure out what it is and then name it. Um, and it's not unusual when you're building a building or you're in a big hurry to get an installation in that you forget to name the pieces. Um, and so that's why I'm always talking about naming your objects. And so I'm going to fly through these other boards. And these are up in the Second Life MOOC Skills Playground, which if you walk out the front door of the SL MOOC headquarters in Second Life um, and just look up to the north, you'll see at the top of the hill in front of you the display boards that we were using in the sandbox for the last building workshop. <clears throat> and what I've done is I've um, got another piece of land <clears throat> and the whole land is called the SL MOOC skills playground and all of the information is up there um, um, for that uh, last build workshop and for this one as well so you can go up there and read the boards and play around and see what you need to do but this is the ubiquitous let me get my pointer here this is the ubiquitous build menu with all the possible options and um, and we looked at that last time so I'm just and then we're going to get to the thing about how you kind of approach what you're doing. Yeah, you can fly up there, no problem. Um, and we'll do that after I get done with the presentation. We can meet at the headquarters and fly up the hill or walk up the hill. And there's now some signs um, also on the walkways and a couple of new walkways. And then we change dimensions. And these are all the things that we did last time. And there are boards for each of these that show you how to do this. And then here's my here's my big bugaboo, which is 
to save your object as a template because then when you go into your inventory, you know what you're looking at and you can find the thing that you were working on and continue working on it. Or, as we'll do in this workshop, you'll use it as the basis of a teaching tool, the, using an object as a teaching tool. Um, be in, and being able to find the object when you come back and want to use it again is really important. So that's why I always say this, save your object as a template. So this is the stuff that we never got around to. Um, and basically, we never got around to making, uh, talking about how you make decisions about what kind of thing you put together for your students depending on what your teaching purpose is with that particular tool or that particular display that you're making or um, what you, just what your general purpose is. For instance, this little guy back here um, was a board put together by someone in the Chilbo community to give freely all these different textures to people who wanted to learn to build. And this you might recognize from the Chilbo Education Resource Center. It's on the wall. And you can click it and you get all of these nice um, uh, templates, all of these nice textures, because um, the visual stuff that we see all around us in Second Life are made from textures. So in this one, you get all of these. Um, I don't know why you came in with me. <laughs> um, I'm a AK. Maggie Larimore. Anyway, you get all of these nice textures and you slap them on those plywood prims. And remember that prim is short for primitive. And that just means the building blocks of Second Life. So we're going to go through this quickly and then get to, to today's presentation. And I'm doing, um, rather than doing this all in world world for your purpose. And you don't want to just kind of turn around your purpose and <laughs> make it inside out um, or do it, uh, um, kind of force your purpose into a technique that you know and love. You want to do that the opposite way. You want to have a purpose in mind and then you want to search for the technology that really works for you. So for instance, one of the questions that we can ask is, are we de decorating a wall with similar items? This is a picture of the um, part of the photo gallery in on the second floor of the MOOC headquarters. So these little pictures here are all made from a template that's just called um, picture template that I made a while ago and we're going to make today. Um, and I have slapped onto these picture te templates photographs that were taken um, by different people that I swiped off of Facebook or that I took myself. And I've put them in each one of these picture frames. And the other thing we're going to do is um, take a look at uh, how you get this to work, how you get this frame on here. Um, and that's actually a wizard. And I'm going to give you the information. Hi, Nevis. Hi, everybody, if I didn't say that. Um, I'm going to give you the information on how to get the really nifty free script to put um, a, a picture frame on your prim. Now, a script is kind of an internal set of instructions. It's sort of like computer programming. It can be very complex. It can be very simple. I'm not a scripter. So I know a couple of ways to get a hold of scripts that I don't have to write myself. Um, and that's kind of important when you just want to get in there and teach. Now, the other thing is you want to look, you want them to look all the same. And if so, that's another good reason to have a template. For instance, these are um, uh, Doris's uh, placards that she's made for everybody's um, it, uh, presentations. And each of these placards is the same size and they all give something to somebody. And that's something else we'll be talking about. And part of how big these things are depends on whether or not you want somebody to walk up with their avatar and be able to see what's going on or do you want to have something that you can put lots and lots of them, like the photo gallery, and you really want people to use their camera control and either mouse look or um, object look, as it says here, to kind of get in really close and see this picture to its best advantage. 
So are you you want your, your students to stand at a distance from your display and kind of take it all in as they walk in the room? Or do you want them to kind of put themselves right in front of it and really take a look at it? And that can be a decision for wanting them to be more engaged with your display, or it could be a decision that you just have so much to put up, you, you know, you need to have some room, so you're limiting the size of the display boards. Another thing you have to ask yourself is, what does this thing that you're working with need to do? Um, whoops. I'm not sure what that means, so no more scripts to do this. Um, uh, sorry, what I meant was in the old days, 2008, we had to uh, write scripts to do all kinds of uh, stuff like this. You couldn't just do it. So technology has really changed, and I'm glad. Well, you're st somebody is still writing the scripts, the, 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 and you can learn to write scripts yourself, but there are several different ways that you can kind of make that process easier by using what other people have put together. I used to, I used to tell, and what I have for you guys is a wonderful website that has a script generator on it. And I use that all the time um, to, to put things together. Last night uh, at the VISTI, that's the Virginia Society for Technology and Education, they had a make and take. And they do this um, almost every Monday evening at 5 p.m. Second Lifetime, which is 8 p.m. Eastern. And um, Mandy Mimilis, who did this, uh, who does the Make and Take, fantastic building teacher, she um, introduced us all to another guy that has a little software program that you can get a free version of that will also generate scripts that can be used in Second Life. So basically, there are places where you can go, like Builders Brewery, which is one of the places that I always um, recommend. And there's a board, display board on that with a landmark in the Education Center. Um, you can go to places like Builders Brewery and you can get a lot of free scripts. And I actually have a little script uh, um, uh, object giver. Yeah, they are all at the end and you also get them in Second Life. So you'll be able, they're at the end of this pres presentation and uh, they're in Second Life on the display boards. And I have a little um, thing there for you, which you'll see in, in the, when we move over to the next PowerPoint. Um, that will give you a bunch of basic scripts, too, that you can just use. So there's lots of free scripts around that you can pick up and use. Um, and then there are these script generators. And the script generators are great because you um, don't have to do it yourself. And they're very, and they're very, very, very um, flexible, as you will see. So what is it that your display board needs to do? Is Does it need to give people a landmark so they can go someplace and do an activity for the class? Do you want to give them a note card? If you um, were in the tour with Vicki Robinson, she had lots of note cards that, that were in her physics displays. Um, do you, if, you, if you've been on the Easter egg hunt and all the Easter eggs are still up, one of them gives you a cowboy hat, and when you touch it, it changes colors. So do you need it to be that complex? Do you need it to do a variety of things? And the, and the script generator that I'm going to give you actually covers a lot of these. So you can use that. Or do you need to give somebody a folder full of information, which is what Doris is doing with those big placards for each of the presentations? So those are things you want to ask yourself as you're getting ready to figure out how to make your displays for your students. And this is this one that I was telling you about, that when you click on it, it gives you, um, uh, it gives you all these textures that are in, in the object. And we'll talk about that, too. So if you want to just to sit there, you, you need to know how to slap a texture on it. You need to know how to give it some color, or maybe give it a pattern, or make it look like a rock, or make it look like a wall, or a piece of water, or um, something wonderful. And there are lots and lots and lots of texture stores around there as well. Um, there's some with lots of freebies, and there's some with very low price textures. There's lots of places that you can get them. Builders Brewery, again, has millions of textures. And you can also make your own. You can take a picture in real life and upload it to Second Life and slap it on something. 
Um, if you want it to look like a picture in a frame, then there's this freebie script for that that you'll be getting. And if you want it to give something to somebody who touches it, then there's another freebie script that you can use, and that's the script generator. So what I always say is the best way to do this is to keep it simple. Use freebies. Don't spend your money. Take pictures in world to slap on crims. Use what you have in real life. Now, um, in real life, when we want to make an image to put up in the classroom, to print out and you know pin up over the, the, the whiteboard, <laughs> if you still blackboard if you still have one, um, or, or to make a presentation with or whatever, um, you, there's a few tools that you use, and what I use to make my boards and to make a lot of my textures is I use PowerPoint. You can always use a version, a free version of PowerPoint. I use this free software here called Paint.net, and the reason why it's called Paint.net is because they were getting a lot of spam, so they stuck the dot in their name. But when you search for Paint.net, it will take you to um, their website and it's a free uh, it's a paint and photo manipulation software and that's what I use for all of this stuff so I might take a picture in Second Life and there would be a whole big amount of material here the rest of the trees and all the other display boards I hit the print screen button and then I just um, open up paint.net and click on edit and take insert new image and I crop it down to the things that I'm interested in for instance here I've got the picture frame we're going to see, and this is what a script looks like, and so on. Copy, shift, and drag is your friend, too. Um, and I'm going to show you how to do that in the world. It's basically a nifty little trip, trick where you have your object, and you want to make another one of that object. So you right-click on it, and you hold the shift key down, and you grab that movement error with your mouse, and you pull, and it pulls out. It perfect copy of your original object. So that's copy, shift, and drag, and that's your best friend. And so is Builder's Brewery. Not only do you get a nifty hat like this that you can wear that's in almost any color, but you can um, um, you can also get all these things that you need, like shapes and textures and scripts and so on for free. I think this is the last slide for this one. Okay, so now we're going to turn to today. And today is teach, turning an object into a teaching tool. And you do that by giving it one of these features, um, whether it's just putting up something interesting up on the, on the display board for people to read or doing some other more complex things with it. So when we get um, in the pow this PowerPoint, we're going to be, and in the workshop, we'll be exploring the following. Now, you don't have to do absolutely everything. If you come in with me today, after we get done with the PowerPoint, there's no reason why you have, um, yeah, free clothes and show up center, free shoes, free tables, free houses, free scripts, free, um, free everything, um, free textures. Um, that's how you get, when you have too many things in your inventory, you put all the things that you can transfer into a box and stick them out at somebody's second life yard sale. So, now, you're not going to need to, um, you're not going to need to do all of these things today. As I said, all of the um, um, display boards will be up there for us to play with for the rest of the course, and I'm not going to take them down for the next few months. So, if you'd like to come back and check them. There's the camera control one. There's the one about taking snapshots. And then there's all these building things. Um, you can come at any time. So, but what we're exploring, so not so you don't get too worried about this, is making a picture frame template, making a shape that gives, an, gives a landmark, making a display board that gives a URL. So it, gives a, it launches you out to a website. And um, making a display board that gives a folder of resources. And what you'll learn is where to get free gadgets, where to find the script generator, and how to add a script to your object, and then how to add the landmarks and URLs and whatever other kind of content you want to add to your object as you make your object. So in this screen, and I'm just going you through this stuff for the sake of the recording, um, and I'm really glad the <laughs> chat is uh, not going to be in the recording necessarily. Um, that's all we're doing is talking about shopping, and that's something I'm very interested in myself. 
Um, uh, in fact, yesterday I got something free um, at one of my favorite stores. So what you see here is that one of the first things you want to do if you're going to leave an area, and this is just really useful. Um, if you want, if you're going to leave an area, you always want to log in a particular place, or you always want to be able to get back to a particular place. You want to make a landmark so that you can return to that place that you want to be in. And if you're going to a new place, a new store, or you're going out to take a look at, I know. <laughs> <laughs> totally multitasking. Um, if you're going away from your present location to go uh, walk around the Berlin Sim or go and see London or go and buy some shoes, um, you may want to get back easily to, to where you were. It used to be that you could pop up your history a little bit more easily than you can now and just click on the last location you were in. Um, exactly. Nivis, it's so easy to get lost, and sometimes you just have really no idea how to find the location you were in to begin with, and you have to go back to whatever was your source of the original Searle. So what you do is you look at the, your browser. Now remember, if this is browser, a Second Life browser 2.7, um, if you have an earlier form of the Second Life browser or you have Firestorm or uh, Phoenix or some of the other browsers, you may not have quite the same locations for your menus, but that's okay. You look for World and um, you look for this little line up here that says Landmark This Place. And when you click on Landmark, it will bring up a board that looks like this. Now, the nifty thing about this is not only does this go into your inventory so that you can find it again, but this little bar right here, which gives the name of the land, is actually editable. You can change this to something. So you can change it to my favorite shoe shop, for instance, or you can change it to um, the uh, Second Life MOOC headquarters, or you can change it to anything that you want to do that's going to allow you to get back to that place. Um, and by the way, there's another way that you can kind of have a, a, a starting point, and that's setting home. And um, we used to have a place that was uh, a building, actually, in Chilbo that people could set as their home. But I'm pretty sure you can do that with the headquarters building, and you can do that with the sandbox, and it's actually on this same um, menu here. World, here's landmark, it's play, landmark this place, and if you go down here, here's set here to home. So if you find a place that you really would like to return to all the time, or you would like to start up in whenever you come back into Second Life, whether it's a spot that you own because you have a paid membership, or it's a spot that you're renting, or it's just a spot that you like, like here in, in the Chilbo Education Village, you just set set home. And then you go teleport home, either control SIF, yes, you can use the SL MOOC headquarters for sure. Um, to teleport home, then you do control shift plus H, or you just open this menu and click on teleport home. So these are two good things to know, or, there are three good things. You can make a landmark to a place you want to return to. You can change the name of the landmark. You don't see this little guy down here, but you also have a notes box where you can put some information about what this place is and what you're going to be doing there, or anything that you think you need to know about it. And then you can also set a, a place that you really like to be home. And, that, and then you can teleport home there. And that's another thing to remember. If you ever teleport in on a um, landmark and things have changed in the location of whatever it is you're trying to find, you know, things change a lot inside of Second Life, you can materialize under a floor or um, in a, um, in a, uh, at the bottom of an ocean or hanging in the air or something else. Um, if you find that you're inside a wall or under a floor and you can't get out, the thing to do is, or if you're walking on something and you fall in a ravine and you can't figure out how to fly out, there's something physical that seems to be keeping you from getting up. Sometimes they'll 
you're under a bridge or you know something like that, you can always open the world menu and click teleport home or open your inventory and click on another landmark. That's also um, a good thing to know if you uh, end up in a kind of a rough neighborhood, which actually does happen in Second Life, only not as much as it used to. You can also use teleport home or one of your landmarks to get away from the person um, that you don't want to be around. So it's really good to be able to know how to do this and to be able to keep keep a kind of customized, personalized track of what your landmarks are. You can also click on a landmark in your inventory, right click it and rename it usually. Not all the time, it depends on what type of landmark it is, whether or not the person that wrote it is allowing it to be modified, but usually you can right click on it and give it a name that makes better sense to you. So you can rewrite it in Italian if you want to. Um, now, the, the other thing that we're going to do, do today and that you can do um, uh, when you're in, in Second Life on your own, and this is one of the reasons why I wanted to tell you about making a landmark, is that you're going to use a landmark to go to the Crystal Gadget Store. Now, the Crystal Gadget Store is a very useful place to go. They not only have a lot of free gadgets that you can use um, if you want to build some things, but they also have some other ones that are low price and you can join their um, website and at the end of this presentation there's the SURL also, um, or the URL, sorry, for their website which gives you a lot of information about building and about their other stores and about resources that you can find that are free. So what we're going to do to make these picture frames, and this is one of, this is probably the thing that I use the most. If you ever look at any of the stuff in my learning center, you'll notice that almost everything has a frame on it. And that's because of Frame Wizard. And Frame Wizard, unfortunately, you have to pick up yourself. I can't give it to you. Things in Second Life are, are have three possible um, uh, permissions to them. And you can see this in that little board over here, copy, mod, and tran transfer. Copy, if it says copy, that means you can make lots and lots of copies of the thing. You, you can use it a million times. If it says modify, you're able to modify it in different ways. Um, like sometimes if you pick up a chair someplace, like those chairs uh, that are on um, the first floor in my visitor center and also, or learning center and also on the second floor, that's actually one chair that I bought for 10, 10 linden someplace, but it, it's copyable. So I can literally right click on it, hold down the shift key and drag another chair out from the original chair and change its colors. And I can change its colors because it allows modification. And I can, in that case, I can transfer it to somebody else. Now this says transfer, but it isn't. <laughs> it doesn't really let you transfer this. Um, you can you can give people a frame, uh, a picture frame that already has all of this in it, and, and I think it will work. But you can't pull it out of that and put it into another um, another thingy. So it's just good to go and get the little freebie, and it's free, so you can click on it and it gives it to you, and then you can use it, and you'll see how. So. We're going to use our, you're going to use your landmark um, to get yourself, I'm extending this Nelly, um, you're going to use your landmark to make sure you can get yourself back to the playground, then you're going to use the Crystal Gadgets landmark to get to the store, and when you get to the store you're going to turn left and walk over and you'll be able to see um, where you pick up your free frame maker. Now when you make a picture frame, and this is also on boards, there's a lot of different things you do. One of the things that I do, and so this is what I'm focusing on here, is I take a regular prim and then I change on the object tab the X to 1. No, not just yet, but in a little bit. Um, the X to 1, the Y to 0 0.01 or 0 0.02, and the Z to 1. And then what you get is a really skinny um, board that looks like a picture frame. Um, sometimes I don't use a board that skinny, but um, um, but this is kind of cool if you're putting up pictures on the wall. So you get you use this to make sure you have it's one high, it's one meter high, it's one meter wide, and then the depth of it is not very big. So I use that here, and that's just easier to do 
with the numbers then dragging around on the little um, uh, stretch bars, the st little stretch uh, buttons that you get. Now over here is the content tab, and we haven't looked at the content tab before. In the content tab, obviously, is where you put all the stuff. So when you open up the, your freebie clothing or clothing you bought for a zero or whatever, um, you you get to you get to click on open. It shows you it opens a box. It shows you all the different things that are inside the box. You know, three T-shirts and four pairs of blue jeans and a couple of ten, uh, versions of tennis shoes, and then it gives you the option to open it. Well, this is where this lives in that object on the content list and here. And this is where your frame wizard is going to go. And the frame wizard is a very interesting kind of script because it evaporates once you're finished using it. You still have it in your inventory. And then when you activate it, you get it in there, and now it's it's working on the, on the prim. Then you'll find when you come back to click on the prim, you have that little hand and you click again, or you click touch off your menu, and it comes up with this little object thing here. Now, if you've named, <laughs> if you've named your object already, it will tell you what the name of the object is, and then it allows you to do a variety of things. Now, if you want to slap a, um, if you want to slap a, a frame on this little guy, you click on apply, and then this second method the second menu comes up and it gives you you can't it's not too easy to read these down here but what they are things like beech cherry hickory plywood granite pine um, maple gold and uh, bark and these these are some of the options of what you can make your frame look like I chose granite in this case and when you do that you click on it it puts the back in the texture of the frame type that you've chosen and it also gives you this nifty little frame and it leaves you this empty space that you can put something in. So one of the things I'm going to, I suggested was to take either take a texture from your, um, take a texture from your uh, um, inventory or take a photo of yourself and plop it in there. So what I did was I grabbed a photo from an ID badge that I had to make a couple of weeks ago, and I dragged it from my inventory and slapped it right here. Um, so I didn't go inside of my object at all. I just dragged it over from my inventory and dropped it on the picture right on this, this part. And then I clicked on it again, and this time I liked my frame. And I like the size of my frame. I could resize my frame if I want. Um, and I like the texture that I dropped into the frame. So I cl click on Commit All. And when you click on Commit All, it kind of makes what you've done pretty permanent. And it, it evaporates the frame wizard thing. So the next time you click on it, you won't have frame wizard in the content. So this is a pretty cool thing to do. And you can make these big frames or small frames. You can do all kinds of things. Once you've done this to resize it, um, you still can resize the picture board. But you've got your um, you've got your uh, uh, frame in place. So that's kind of cool. Now, one of the other things we were talking about was creating something that will allow you to give something to somebody. So I, you'll see this if you haven't been up in the playground yet. You'll see this little thingy here that I put together. And it's basically a cylinder. So I went into the build menu. And instead of picking a cube like we always do, I grabbed a cylinder. And then I made it really big. I just right-clicked on it and clicked on stretch and just dragged it out. Because I'm going to use this as something that I want you to be able to find and see, even when it's dark in Second Life, I clicked on this little option on the Texture tab. So this is the Texture tab called Full Bright. And that means that your object will kind of illuminate itself. So even if the region that you're in has gone into midnight and it's very dark outside and all that, your object will still be visible because it's full bright. I also double-clicked on this little texture box, and this other dialog box came up. And it gives you a number of options. If you have default on, that's when it looks like a piece of plywood, you know, a piece of wood. When you click blank, it makes it look like a painted surface or 
some other kind of featureless, textureless surface. So I clicked blank. And then I decided um, that I wanted to put something on it. So I went down into my library tab, and these blue um, folders that you see in your inventory are provided to you by Linden Labs. So you have all kinds of nifty things in there that you can use. There's wood textures and beach textures and tree check textures and extra clothes and other avatars and nifty little things that you can put in your house if you rent a house. So I went down um, and I can't see, oh, I went down to floor tile and I took floor tile number one, which is what is that, what's there, and I clicked on it and it appeared in this box and then it appeared on my object. And there's lots of ways you can slap textures on. You can do them the way we did them in this last slide, which is to drag and drop onto one face of your object or one part of your object. Or you can go in and use the texture tab and put a texture in this way. If you do it this way, it covers the entire object. Yeah, I'm sure you did because building hasn't changed very much, I don't think, since the very beginning. Um, and then. Then you, uh, of course, want to change the name of your object if you're going to have it be a giver or you want people to know what it is. Um, and you change the name of your object. And then you take a copy into your inventory so that you have yet another template. Then here is where something wonderful happens. And I'm giving you in that, in the display board that you just saw, and in this display board, and at the end of this presentation, I'm giving you this URL, which is www.3greeneggs.com backslash auto script. And that is, let me write it in here. That is this wonderful place. It's put together by a professor of computer sciences whose avatar is called Anne Enigma, which I think is really nice. And you can see greeneggs.com. Oops, I forgot that period. Wait a minute. Dot com. Autoscript. And that's a really wonderful tool to be able to get to because this is this wonderful generator of scripts. So basically, you just take a look at it, you read the description, and you make some decisions. And you can give things. You can have your object say hello or do something else. Um, you can change the color or the texture. You can put a hovering text. So all that stuff, when you see things that say click here, and it's kind of hovering above the object, that's one of you can make one of those. You can make it make a, make a sound. You can prompt an avatar to load a URL in their browser. You can do lots of things. And then if you want to give something, I click give something to the avatar. Um, you, you, you can choose what you want to give them. So in this case, I said a landmark. If you, ch if you, choose, um, if you chose a URL, it would give you a spot where you can put the, the, the website address in. And then I can decide when that script goes into effect. So it could go into effect when the avatar is wandering by, or when somebody says something in the chat, or at, on a repeating timer, so every couple of seconds, um, as soon as the script starts, or when the avatar touches your, your object. This is how, unfortunately, some of the brand new um, people who come into Second Life make griefing objects, because they will um, use a script like this and put it on a repeating time and have it pop out some kind of a particle or something else that fills up the environment, which is not a good thing. But for us, this is a good thing. So you make your choices, and then you click Make My Script. And up comes your script right here. Now, this box, you can you can cut. It isn't, it isn't a lot of... Um, it isn't a lot of problems. One of the reasons why it's not a lot of work is, first, you don't have to sit down and write all this code. And when you take a look at the script, see, this is a Hello Avatar script. You have to be careful of where you're putting things. You're using um, punctuation to mean specific things. You're defining things geographically. It's extremely difficult. And the auto scripter is very quick. Once you make your first script, uh, of that you like, that you can use, you can also right-click on the script inside of your object and 
and make a copy, or you can click on it and drag it out of your out of your object into your inventory, and that gives you a copy of the script. So then you've got that script to just throw into something else later. So the first time you make a script, you generate it with the help of this. So it's extremely easy, much easier than learning how to script. So once you've, you've copied all of this, you're opening up your um, <laughs> You're opening up your object and you're going back to the content, the content tab and now you're doing something a little bit um, different. You're going to click on this button here, which you can't quite see, but it says new script. And it will generate this little guy here that just says, hello, avatar. Um, and what you do is you delete all of this in all of these lines. The numbers will, the line numbers will stay there. Those are automatic, but you delete all this information and then you copy in the text that you got from your script generator. Then you click on save and it'll chunk along for a little while and then it will say down here save is complete or script is complete. If there's an error it will tell you um, I've never had a problem with an Enigma scripts um, of getting an error and once you've done that it will close up and then I recommend instead of leaving it new script so you have to open it up and see what it does you right click on it and you give it a title. So for instance, you're giving a landmark and so you just rename your, um, you rename your script, um, give a landmark and then you can click on it and drag it to the inventory and that will give you in your inventory a script called give a landmark. And the next time you want to give a landmark, you just drag that script back out again and drop it in. It's a lot of work, Tom, but it's, it's um, I agree with Millie, but it's wonderful work. And the reason why it's wonderful work is it's sort of like sitting at your kitchen table with a pack of crayons and a big piece of paper or um, be doing a more adult thing and having your watercolors out and painting or, or all kinds of different things. Um, it's a creative act, and when you're finished with the creative act, you can see what you did. And that's very important, um, and it get, makes you inspired. And you start watching other people and seeing what they've done and whether or not you can use what they've done. Tom, I also recommend um, uh, organizing your inventory. I have, I have uh, it gives you some inventory categories to begin with, and then I make subdirectories. For instance, I have an SL MOOC subdirectory now. Um, so, so this is how you manage the thing, and this is all on boards as well, and we'll practice this as well. So the final steps are, this is basically what you're doing here. Now this guy, I have to tell you, is called Template for a Giver Object on account of it's got all these scripts in the content, and it's a little confused. So it doesn't know what to do with all these scripts. It does have one script that works really well, which is Give All Content. So when you click on the template, it will put all of the scripts that exist here in the, in the script giver into your inventory, and you've got them ready-made, and you can use them any way you want to. Um, so what you want to do is you, you, when you're putting things together, you want to find the, the freest thing you can find. You want to make sure you name what you're doing so that you have templates in your, in your inventory. You want to use a generated script or steal a script from somebody else or get a free script from somebody else. You want to drag and drop your landmark, your texture, or your object into your contents frame. And that's that contents tab where the script lives. Whatever you want to give a person, you just yank it over there. Um, if you, you will, and in this template for a giver object, you will find a give all content script. And you can copy it to any object. Any of these you can copy to any object that you're playing with. A URL launcher script. Now that's like if you go in my learning center and you click on those boards that have faces, it will pop, or you click on the book covers, they, they will pop up a little menu that will say, this object is giving you this URL, do you want to open your browser? And you can click yes and out you go um, to, the, to the browser that it's mentioning. It gives you a landmark script and an inventory script, and it gives you a hover text script. Now this is a little bit more daunting because you want to be able to change the script. So when you put your hover script on an object, you want to um, exactly, Ivor, exactly, um, 
I am not giving you higher order building skills and I don't recommend overwhelming yourself with something really higher order. Find the simplest way that you can do something and do that a lot and then find the next thing up and do that a lot. And sooner or later, two or three years later, two or three classes later, you're going to have it all scoped out and you're going to have a backlog of materials that you can use again and that your students can continue to use similar to what Vicki Robinson has in her physics installation, as she was saying in her lecture, five years worth of work went into that. So she started with a single physics display and built up from that. And as she got to be a better scripter and she got to know where to get the, you know, to get somebody to help her with stuff or she got new ideas, then things got more and more complex. So you always do what you can now, be happy and satisfied with it, be proud of your creations, and then wander around and learn more and learn more and learn more. It's, um, I, I used to say that I was a premier script stealer and, print and texture slapper because I would look for, um, I would look for uh, people's uh, stuff that, had, that were uh, with open permissions that I could copy the script out of if I, if I liked what the thing was doing. Um, or, and I could, take a, I could take a picture or a, a texture and throw it on an object, either on one side or on the whole object. And so I was able to do that. And people would say, oh my god, this is wonderful. Well, yeah, it was basic skills. And as I learned them, I used them. This is another reason why I recommend um, uh, Mandy Mimilis's make and takes because she always does something different. She gives you all the components and she walks it, walks you through it, and you walk away with something wonderful and that has a script you can use for something else, and you have new textures and all that stuff. So let me get back to a hover script, and then I think this is the last one, and we can get out of here and go meet up in Second Life. Um, you you. In a hover script, you actually go into the content tab, you double click on that hover script and it opens up and then you want to take a look at it and look for the place where the words you were seeing above the object appear in the script. Being careful not to delete the punctuation around those words, you can click on that line and you can back out that message and put in your own message. So, for instance, a lot of my hover scripts, I've, I've swiped from other people. I have one that says um, freebies for teachers and one that says um, information on Jamestown and, you know, one that says uh, get a free cowboy hat, that kind of thing. And I just, when I use those hover texts, because some of them are pink and some are blue and green and all that stuff, I go and find that place where it says what is in the text. Well, you need to go look for the Easter eggs, Nevis, because there is an Easter egg, and I'll give you a hint. It's near, um, it's somewhere around the sandbox behind the SL MOOC that has, and if you click on it, one of those Easter eggs will give you a free cowboy hat that you can change the colors of. So, back to the hover thing. <coughs> go to hover text, you know what it says. You open it up and you look for that phrase inside of some punctuation being careful not to disturb the punctuation, you change that information. And then you click on save, and you, when you click on save, um, for the, uh, hold on a second, when you click on save, it compiles that script for you, and then when you uh, close down your editing frame, your object will now say what you, what you wanted it to say. There is, on the second floor of the SL MOOC, there is a, an Easter egg that says, no card, it says, I think it says landmark locations for frustrated hunters. And if you click on that egg, it will give you a note card, and in the note card, you will get a landmark for every single one of the Easter eggs. Um, it also has a landmark for the starting point that has um, the no card about how to do the Easter egg hunt. So if you're really lazy and you really don't want to go looking for them, you can go and click on um, uh, that thing up on the second floor of the, of the headquarters and it will give you all those landmarks. And then you can just click on those landmarks in the note card and it will take you to each of the eggs. You might have to look up or fly, you know, pop up a little bit to see something that's up on a wall, 
but it's jet it's going to be right there where you can get it and the reason why I did that actually is because in my old days of being a social committee member for the International Society for Tech and Education in Second Life um, and being a, and then later on running the committee is that um, some of my colleagues um, we had a lot of hunts so, so we had a hunt um, once uh, of 20 it was Halloween so one of my friends had put out 20 um, uh, calabasas 20 um, pumpkins and each pumpkin had prizes in it and she forgot where they all were so if you got all 20 then you won the big grand prize and they all, each one would put in a folder in your inventory that had some freebies and the folder was was pumpkin number one pumpkin number two etc so you could tell if you had all 20 and she couldn't remember where some of them were so I don't think anybody found all 20 so that's that's a reason why I always make um, both for myself and for people that are that are just about to throw themselves off a second life building because they can't find um, the last one and that's also the reason why I don't give grand prizes for getting all 10 because it makes people feel bad so anyway there's a way to get your cowboy hat and a way to get the locations of all those Easter eggs if you've had difficulty finding them and I did that by taking an Easter egg that I had gotten from somebody else and, and changing the hover text and um, putting dragging and dropping my own card into it so that was not me making that from scratch that was me um, uh, stealing scripts and slapping textures and um, editing the hover text so I think this is the last slide except for the linkies yep this is the last slide and now in a, in a second we can go off to Second Life so the resources the URLs and the swirls and that's the Second Life URL um, for this particular presentation is that you can get free wizard from Crystal Gadgets and you have the website link and you have the website landmark page so instead of giving you the SURL it takes you to their actual website and that's a great idea to go there because you could find out about more free things um, and their landmarks page has not only the crystal gadget store that I showed you but several other installations that they have and I think they're also in other um, areas around um, there's also other areas around the uh, um, the virtual world metaverse in other in other sims and other virtual worlds and then this is the link obviously to um, an enigma script generator and this is also interesting because if you click around on some of the things that she gives you you can find out all kinds of things about scripting and you can find out about her she's a um, the last I looked at her bio she was a computer science professor in the New York City area so I need to turn on Second Life on this computer and then we can meet up in the SL uh, headquarters and, um, and take a look <coughs> at what's going on. Um, so let me get behind this. I don't know, Nellie, if you're going to be screen sharing here or um, if you need me to turn on screencast matic and, and record um, the SL stuff. I think it's. Of course, you're going to have Cam yeah, Vision on too. It's better but, to um, record that you record in Second Life. Um, Wiz IQ is going okay. to be doing this in the very near future, so um, I'm looking forward to that. We won't have to do anything. It's just going to be automatic. But until then, yes. Okay, let me find my screencast matic on this one. Or I will go back to the other computer. Oh, here it is. So I'm searching around here for my stuff. Um, and I will be in Second Life from now on because um, if I move while I've got. Um, screencast matic going, it's not happy. Really? All right, so oh, shall we screen. close the class? Uh, first of all, have... Uh, yeah. Sure, we could do that, absolutely. Um, and, uh, and then meet us all in there.
and then we can record that and that can be added to the live session recording yeah yeah absolutely then exactly um, um, if you send me your mp4 from Kisha um, or I can re-record it myself yeah, whichever way you want to do it just yeah. let me know let me go back into this queue I think what I'm going to do is get over on my other computer so I just want to say bye and thank you to everybody who won't be following us well we'll have the recording um, over to Second Life and I'm saying we'll have huh? the recording for them well so yes we'll that's have okay yeah all right so you're all invited to join us we will. Um, yeah. and uh, we'll close the class thank you thank you everyone this of course is being recorded so you'll get the recording on Wiz IQ plus on YouTube through Camtasia and the rest of it from Second Life will be recorded and added to YouTube as well thank you yep So bye, everybody. I'll see. I'll see.